Okay, this is lecture 24, homology and analogy. Um, I know that most of you are saying, Prof, but we know this already. Why are you going on about homology and analogy? Yes, yes, uh, Dr. Skuman gave you a lot of this in animal phylogeny last year. That's right. And you also learned it in, in, in first year. And I am only, don't worry, I'm only very briefly skimming through this. Uh, because I know that most of you know it already, but I'm going to take it necessarily to the third year level. All right. So remember in the last lecture, at the end of the last lecture, I left you with a question, right? We group similar organisms together based on their traits. If their traits are similar, we say they had a common ancestor, but is that the right thing to do? All right. So before we get to the answer of that question, which is a big question, is one of biology's big questions, right? I want to talk to you about homology. All right. And this is a concept in biology that you can't be a biologist and not understand this. Okay. You won't be very, you won't be very successful. Everything in biology stems from an understanding of homology. Okay, so like variation, remember I keep saying variation is a very central concept in biology. Yes, it is. Well, homology is the other one of the other central concepts in biology. You can't not know about this and get a BSc in biology. Okay, so that's why you're, you're going to have you're going to be examined on this stuff. All right, so you must you must, in a, in a th at third year level, be able to explain the concept of homology. And you must be able to do that using examples. So then let's unpack it. huh? Let's unpack it for ourselves. What is homology? Right. And I know some of you are saying, but prof, we know already. I'm sorry. You guys can skip a bit forward. OK, but this is for everyone, this lecture. Right. And we it's it's, it's no harm to just uh, refresh our memories. OK. Uh, so that when it gets complicated and complicated it will get, then nobody is lost, okay? Because everybody knows the basics. So what is homology? Homology refers to common ancestry, okay? Let's say that again. Homology refers to common ancestry. That's, that's all it is. Homology refers to common ancestry. So if you look at a trait, like say blue eyes or whatever, right? If you look at a trait, is it a homologous trait or not? Okay. A homologous trait is a trait that is inherited from a common ancestor. Okay. A homologous trait is a trait inherited from a common ancestor. All right. So... What the, the if I say to you that such and such trait is homologous, what am I telling you about how similar visually those traits are? What am I telling you about that? Some of you will say, yeah, prof, you're saying because it's from a common ancestor, they have to be the same. No, I'm not saying that. Homologous does not mean that. Homologous does not mean that they have to look the same. Homologous only means that it comes from a common ancestor. They actually can look different. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And you thought you knew homology. Yeah, right. Let's refresh our memories. Okay. Homology, if I say a trait is homologous, it doesn't tell me anything about how it looks or how similar the trait is in two organisms. Okay. It tells me nothing about the similarity. It only tells me that the trait is coming from a common ancestor. Okay? So, let's go back to our question from the last lecture, lecture 23. Okay? The question I left you with, you, we, are, we, are, we built this tree with the lizards, remember? We built this tree based on traits that were shared. Okay? And we said if they share the trait, like the marks here, then they are coming from a common ancestor here. Because both of them have... The marks. These, these guys don't have the marks. So these two 
must be most closely related to each other there from a common ancestor there that evolved the box okay but is that really so are individuals with similar traits most closely related just because the trait basically just because the trait is similar does that give us the right to put those two into the same part of the tree just because they look similar <laughs> no i'm not contradicting myself yes you need to you need to put them together on the basis of similarity but is it the right thing to do only if the trait is homologous okay that's the answer so you put them so you 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 if an individual share a trait we say that they are most closely related yes but only if that trait is homologous only if that trait is coming from a common ancestor if the trait is not coming from a common ancestor you can't use it to build a tree okay you can't use it to build a tree we cannot use non-homologous traits to build a tree so just because two things look similar doesn't mean to say that they are coming from a common ancestor it doesn't mean to say that they are actually similar okay because the only thing that we need to build a trait from is homology that means is the trait coming from a common ancestor yes we can use it to build a tree okay otherwise we will always get the wrong tree if we use non-homologous in other words analogous traits to build a tree we would always get the wrong answer that is what a non-homologous trait is it's called an analogous trait okay an analogous trait so non and these analogous traits are very annoying because they can look very similar sometimes they can look so similar you think that they are homologous but they are not so let us uh, uh, let us look at a couple of examples okay now this cartoon tells you classically right look at these two girls okay look at their face their faces are very similar right why because they are of the same they probably are sisters and they have the the same uh, parents okay so they're similar because of inheritance in other words they are similar because of homology because of common ancestry they have the same common ancestor their parents okay because they're sisters now these guys here look at these two at first you are looking and thinking Aish, but they look quite similar don't they yes they do look quite similar but look at their skin color one's a white guy and one's an indian guy right immediately you are saying uh -uh, these two don't have the same parents because one's a white guy and one's an indian guy right so why are they looking similar they are looking similar because what because they are wearing the same clothes they are put they've put on the same clothes and uh, uh, if if some of you are uh <laughs> clever enough you will realize that they are both both these men here are trying to impersonate a famous musician from the 1960s and 70s called who called elvis presley okay so they are both elvis presley lookalikes okay and they've got elvis presley clothes on but you see they are not from a common ancestor okay they are their their similarities are coming not because of common ancestry okay and so these guys the fact that they look similar are is because of analogous trait not common ancestry whereas these two sisters look similar because yes they're homologous it's a they're coming from a common ancestor all right so let's build a phylogeny just to prove to you what i'm saying is correct let's build a phylogeny based on an analogous trait okay let's take an a classic analogous trait is the ability to fly or flight okay so if you can fly we'll say you've got the trait of flight okay so let's take um a fish can it fly no can't fly what about a mouse can it fly no you know mouse can't fly 
okay what about a bird can it fly yes bird can fly great what about a bat if you don't know what a bat is please you don't belong in third year biology okay just uh, for your information a bat is a flying mammal okay we've seen them they come they eat insects at night if you are anywhere in vendor and if you are quiet as the sun is going down you will see things that look like birds flying around but they're not birds they are bats okay so so a bat can fly right so okay let's build a phylogenetic tree based on the trait of flight okay flight is a trait but it's not a very good trait it's an anal it's not a homologous trait it's an analogous trait and we're going to build a tree based on this analogous trait let's see what kind of tree will we get so based on those four mouse a fish mouse bird and bat which two would you put together if you use the trait flight obviously you will put the bird and the bat together because both of them can fly so you put them together and you say ha those two can fly they have a common their most recent common ancestor right so your tree will look like this see your tree there that tree that's come up you will have bats and birds together and then you will have mice uh because um um uh Mice also have four limbs and lungs, the same as these other two here. And based on the fact that they have all got jaws, they are grouped with the fish on the outside. So this is the tree that we would get if we put, if we used the trait of flight, the ability to fly, and we made a tree on that trait. So who can see the problem with this tree okay as i say in third year biology you better be able to see a problem with this tree if you're staring at that tree absolutely with blank blank expression not having a clue what is wrong with that tree then i'm i'm feeling very sorry for you when it comes time to write the exam okay so you should immediately be at third year level in biology, you should be immediately able to look at that tree and say, ah, that's wrong, prof. Why? Because, because bats and birds cannot have a most recent common ancestor when there's a mouse on the tree as well. Okay? Because the mouse and the bat are mammals. Mammalia. They're mammals. They are most closely related to each other. The bird is not closely related to those two, okay? The bird is a bird. It is not a mammal. So the mammals, being the bat and the mouse, here yeah, the bat and the mouse, they are the ones should be the most closely related. In other words, you should have this tree here, okay? You should have the bat and the mouse together because they're both mammals they both have hair they both have milk they both produce milk that's what makes them mammals and then out here you've got the birds that's the correct tree so you see what will happen if you use an analogous characteristic an analogous trait an analogous trait to make a tree you will get this wrong tree here because here is flight our analogous trait and we use this analogous trait to make a tree and look what we got we got the wrong tree okay so it is very dangerous to use an analogous trait to make a tree please let that sink in you cannot make a tree from analogous traits you could only use homologous traits to make a tree all right so so we need to make sure then when we are building a tree that we don't use any analogous traits we only use homologous traits okay so what other classic examples are there of analogous traits and remember i said in in a test and exam you will be asked for examples so what are the examples look look at the shape of this organism here this is a shark look at it pointy nose dorsal fin pectoral fin and big caudal fin 
okay again at third year level if those terms were completely unknown to you i'm not sure what you're doing in third year because you need to know these things basic basic anatomy of vertebrates okay that would you would have gotten in 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 animal phylogeny with uh, dr skumar okay so let's look at the shape of this ichthyosaur an ichthyosaur is an extinct dinosaur it's a reptile okay but we know from their shape and their fossils that they looked exactly like a shark they had the pointy nose they had the dorsal fin pectoral fin and a massive caudal fin look at a dolphin dolphin is not a fossil dolphin is swimming in the ocean if you go to out to the trans sky to kzn you'll see them swimming in the ocean our own ocean and what do they look like they look don't they look very similar to these two they've got a pointy nose dorsal fin pectoral fins and a caudal fin they look very similar so just because the three of them are similar if you had to make a tree from this characteristics that you see that are similar you would put all three of these into the same tree right into the same part of the tree you would say ah oh, all three of them are coming from a common ancestor look how similar the traits are and then if i said okay put a human into that tree or a dog the dog would be outside of that tree but you know that all of these are absolutely different to each other right one is a fish one is a reptile and one is a mammal the dog will be closely related to who it'll be closely related to the dolphin we are closely related to the dolphin we are not closely related to these two so if you put these three together based on this analogous trait you will again get the wrong tree you will say all three have a common ancestor closely related which they do not okay analogous traits flight again you see birds fly ish the uh, uh, um, 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 pterosaurs flying lizards flying dinosaurs also flew and bats fly but they have evolved flight independently okay it's an analogous trait it is an analogous trait here is the wolf and the tasmanian wolf one is a marsupial one is a true uh, a modern mammal and they are look the same but they are absolutely not the same okay so these concepts concepts are context dependent of course right so a trait a trait in one species cannot be homologous and analogous if we are only looking at one species okay because we need something to com we need another species to compare okay we can't just say uh, just in human in one take one human and you say um, you've got a fingernail that trait is analogous or homologous uh, you don't know because you need another species to compare it with okay so you always need to have another to compare to say if something is homologous and or whether it is analogous okay so and then when you have more than one it depends on how many and and how related they are so for example the ability to fly is as i already told you is analogous when you're comparing uh, a mouse with a bat okay or if you're comparing a bird with a bat okay but it is homologous when you're comparing what an eagle with a parrot why because both of them are birds okay and the flight of birds comes from a common ancestor okay so flight or the ability to fly depending on who you are comparing what animals you're comparing it could be analogous and it could be homo or it could be homologous depending on who you are comparing okay and that's what i mean by these concepts being context dependent it depends what you are comparing all right uh, but they are extremely useful so for example look at this tree here okay this tree is telling us because these two birds are on the same part of the tree they both have long legs so that's telling us that 
Long legs are a homologous trait. Okay, in these birds, long legs are homologous. They evolved here in the common ancestor because these guys have all short legs. But these two have long legs and they evolved from a common ancestor. But look at this tree here. Look at these birds with the long tail. So these guys here in the middle have short tails. These guys on the outside have long tails. But look at the relationship between this long tail and that long tail bird. They are not in the same part of the tree. Okay, they are not like here where they're together. They are on different opposite parts of the tree, right? And so what does that mean? That means that the long tails are analogous. They do not come from a common ancestor because the common ancestor for this long tail bird is who? It's here. It's a common ancestor with this short tail bird here. And the common ancestor for that had also a short tail. So the long tail evolved only in this line okay and on this side the long tail also evolved only in this species it's not the long tail of this species is not related to the long tail of that species because they do not come from common ancestry okay so and what it shows you is that the long tail evolved twice that's the beauty of analogy you can see is something evolved more than once okay and if something is evolving more than once like this long tail okay first look at long legs how many times did long legs evolve only once here and then both of them have it but it, the common ancestor evolved at once how many times did long tails evolve here it didn't uh, evolve once and both have it it evolved once here and it evolved ag again here. So it evolved twice. Okay? So that is what it is telling you. The long tails here evolved the same trait independently. So the evolution happened twice of the long tail. But evolution of the long legs here happened once. Okay? And that's important information to know. Okay? So now it comes to our... It comes to our uh, the start of our lecture. Are these homologous traits similar or different in organisms? Well, they can be similar, yes. Like those two sisters who look similar because they have this, the same parents. But also, no. You can have traits that are coming from a common ancestor, but are millions of years old. So the trait itself has changed in shape. For example... Let's look at this. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Here's an example of the yes. Okay. Look at the thumb. Here's, here are three modern hominids. Okay. Chimps, humans, and gorillas. Here's the hand, bones of the hand. Okay. Of all three species. What do you see in common? All of them have a thumb. This one here. All of them. A gorilla has a thumb. Humans have a thumb and a chimp has a thumb. That's telling us that the common ancestor of all three had a thumb. Okay? So, yes, in this case, th you can use the thumb as a homologous trait. And the thumb looks similar in all three. Okay? So, this is a situation where the thumb, the homologous trait, actually looks very similar in all species but how about no when the homologous trait doesn't look similar but it's still homologous and we can still use it to make a tree so how about this this is the classic example of homology where homologous trait does not look similar look at this this is us human this is the bones of our arm okay so we have this bone here, okay, called what? This bone is called the humerus, okay? Tibia, fibula, so that's these two bones, tibia, fibula, two bones here. And then the metatarsals and the tarsals, okay? So the metatarsals are here, this part, and the tarsals are here, making our fingers, okay? That's the human. You have exactly the same. You humans who are watching this video, 
right? But look at the horse. It's got the same bone. You can see that these two bones are coming from a common ancestor. The cat has the same bone. The bat, even though it's flying, remember, it's flying. It's not walking like us. And it's not using, it doesn't have a hand like us. It's not walking on its leg like a horse or a cat. It is flying. It's got the very same bone, the humerus. And look, the bird has exactly the same bone. And look at the whale. Now, you know, the whale is not walking on legs. The whale has got flippers, those pectoral fins, right? Part of the pectoral fin of the whale, the first part is, guess what, is the humerus bone. And the fact that the next bone is always tibia, tibia fibula, it's fused here in the horse because this needs to be very strong. If they are to, if they're separate, it's they're weak. So the horse, it's very strong in the horse. But it's the same two bones: tibia fibula, tibia fibula, tibia fibula. Okay, because they all come from a common ancestor. What do all these animals have in common? The clever ones, and even so, the not so clever ones, because this is not exactly rocket science, know that all of these are vertebrates. Okay? All of these are vertebrates, have a backbone. Except for the bird, okay? All the others are mammals. Okay? So all the vertebrates have exactly the same bones. In the, up, in the upper, middle, and lower arm. All of them. And that is not just by chance. That is because we all evolved from a common ancestor. And therefore, you know that these bones are homologous characteristics, homologous traits. You can use these bones to make a phylogenetic tree. Okay. That leads us... Uh, to a very um, interesting and important two terms, okay? We've got homology and we've got analogy. So homology, from a common ancestor, you have a common ancestor and you become different from the common ancestor, but you trace your inheritance to a common ancestor but from the common ancestor you do what you diverge okay you diverge to become different so let's look at this slide here here's a common ancestor these traits have all the same they're all homologous traits they're all coming from a common ancestor but what has happened they've diverged into different forms one is using it for swimming Two of them are using it for flying. These two are using it for walking. What do we do? We are using it to have an arm, to hold things, to grab things. Okay? We have different uses for these things. So, we have come from a common ancestor and we have diverged. And we have different uses for these homologous traits. Okay? So, divergent evolution occurs when there's homology, when you have closely related organisms and they diverge because of natural selection or whatever evolutionary forces making them diverge. So you have a homologous structure will start to look different because of divergence, because of different evolutionary selection pressures. So for example, look at the Galapagos finches. And guys, we have used Galapagos finches now for many examples, as you know, right? And Galapagos finches are the ones that Darwin discovered when he was a young man and went on his voyage through the Galapagos Islands. And he discovered what? That all different islands have birds with a different beak, different beak size, okay? But they all come from a common ancestor. Even though they, one is using it for, to catch grubs, one is using it as a tool, one is using it to catch insects, one is using it for leaves, one is using it for fruit, okay? So the shape has diverged from a common ancestor because the trait is homologous. So now what about convergence? Convergence is the opposite of divergence. Divergence comes from 
homology and you become different. Okay? That means convergence comes from, not homology, comes from analogy. Yes, this is third year. Okay, you were wondering when the third year part was going to start. This is third year. Okay, so convergence or convergent evolution, when two or more organisms are unrelated, they are unrelated to each other. They don't have common ancestry. Okay, but they become similar. Okay, they become similar looking. Because why? Again, natural selection. Selection pressure favors the same shape. So, convergent evolution comes from analogous characters converge to the same solution. Okay? Whereas divergent comes from homology, homologous character, diverge, and you become different. Convergent evolution has got nothing to do with that. Convergent evolution is analogous characters. Natu they are completely different. They have no uh, common ancestry. But natural selection, because of selection pressure, forces the evolution of the same shape again and again and again independently. So convergent evolution is basically convert analogous traits come to us thanks to convergent evolution. That's really important. So when you see two things that are looking similar, but they are not homologous, it's through convergent evolution. And the classic case I've shown you before, in, even in this lecture, are these three here, right? The shark, the reptile, the fish, the reptile, and the mammal. In the pictures, I had dolphin, but porpoise is the same. And uh, a porpoise is basically a dolphin without a long nose, okay? And it's, it's a mammal. So they look the same. They have the same shape, the dorsal fin, pointy nose, dorsal fin, pectoral fins, caudal fin. All of them have, the, have it. But look where they come from. One comes from a fish. The other one comes from a land reptile with, with legs. There's no dorsal fin, caudal fin here. No? This one also comes from a land mammal with legs. No dorsal fin, caudal fin here. Because of natural selection, living in water, this is the best shape to be if you're going to live in water okay and natural selection makes sure that if you're living in water if you don't have this shape you're dead okay so those who are lucky enough to have this shape are the ones that evolved into these different organisms through convergent evolution they didn't have the same ancestor they had natural selection pushed them in the same direction okay and that's what we call convergent evolution so i will leave it there and we will start our uh, lecture 25 about, and we were now going to get very seriously into trees and tree building. Now that we know that we can only build a tree from homologous characters, we can go forth and build our trees. And we are going to unpack several ways in the next five lectures. And the, all of those ways is how do we build a phylogeny? Okay, so I will see you then for the next lecture.